I had a student that, that was um, uh, looking for a thesis topic, and um, he might have been at, at MIT his first year. Um, I don't know exactly when he started and when he came to my office, but he, he showed up and he said, I'm looking for a thesis topic. So I said, why don't you um, do this thing with me? I, I had this idea uh, that if we make um, any thermoelectric, you could take um, any one you like. Uh, let's take the simplest one and uh, just make a two-dimension, just maybe a Duncan thermoelectric material and uh, make it two-dimensional and see if the calculation would indicate that um, it would be uh, uh, improved or, or not improved. So the early calculation, this is sort of back of an envelope almost, because uh, he came back within a, a couple of days, less than a week. And uh, he had the th total thing worked out and, and checked, and I checked it. And it, I said, yeah, this is interesting. Let's submit it. We didn't have an idea what, where to submit a paper like this, but we just sent it to the physical review. And they were happy. happy. They published it. And uh, so, well, after that, uh, so the student wondered, what do I do next? So I said, well, you did it in two dimensions. One dimension should probably work better. You have more quantum confinement. Why not? Let's try one dimension. So yes, one dimension even worked better. So we wrote another paper. So after that, we said, well, let's figure out a material that might be good for this. Um, I know that bismuth is a good thermoelectric material. Um, and uh, we know the band structure of this because I had no other students working on that subject, so I was right up on that. And they had all, seemed to have all of the right properties for thermoelectric, and it was even known to be a thermoelectric. It wasn't the main one, but it was known to be that. So we did calculations for that one, and uh, that turned out to be very interesting work too. And, um, so we found the condition that a real material would be uh, a thermoelectric. In fact, uh, that is a, a project that we're currently working on again now because um, Dirac cones, the same thing that carbon has in the nanostructured form, um, also can occur in bismuth under certain circumstances or bismuth antimony alloys. And uh, the conditions under what, which that, that occurs um, forms an interesting topic today. And so we, this is another field that we've written some papers. Oh, I would say the first three or four papers went almost unnoticed, hardly noticed. But all of a sudden, when Dirac cones came along, pop, there was huge interest in this. So it went from not much interest to a lot of interest.